I was out on a pirate and I noticed that Gamble had posted a topic about needing help designing and using CAD software. He just received it and he's getting used to it and was running into a few issues. It sounds like he needed to take this L bracket and maybe resize one portion of it. Um, and every time he was trying to do use any of the tools, he was resizing everything. Um, and that's just something you have to get used to with the tools. And so what I'm going to do is I imported that bracket into my software and it's a little odd, a little odd shaped. I don't know if these are the exact sizes that he wants. Um, but let me go ahead and delete the version that I had been doing. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and create, try to create this bracket as close as I can. So if I look at the dimensions with this highlight, I can look at the dimensions up at the top. Um, now, this left side right here, these are the coordinates of where the part exists based on the nub that you have selected. This nub, these nubs right here correspond to these nubs on this object. So the bottom left-hand corner, which is right here, is at this X and Y coordinate. Now these X and Y options are the size, the width, and the height. And then you have this lock proportional scaling, I guess is what they call it, um, which makes sense. I mean, if you lock it if you, and you go change one of the scales, the other scale will proportionally be adjusted to match. Um, however, I think in Gamble's case, he wanted to adjust just a piece of this um, and leave the other part alone. For instance, he wanted to make the width wider um, not necessarily affecting this piece, I'm assuming, or the overall height of this piece. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to recreate this. So let's go ahead and just create a box. doesn't matter what size of box. Um, I want to get the width, which is 1.396. And I'm going to highlight this and paste in the same value. And then I'll come back here and I'll grab the height, which is 0.1 or 1.709. Now, everything worked fine for me in resizing that, and that's because this proportional scaling is unlocked. If I were to take that and lock it and then try to change this to 2, everything was proportionally scaled. Sure, it's 2 inches high, but now it's 1.634 wide. Um, Control-Z to undo that. Let's unlock it. Now if we were to do the exact same thing, you'll notice that it's 2 inches high, but we have 1.396 in width still. So I'm going to undo that because this is dimensionally um, the L bracket that he's creating here. So Now, there are a couple of ways to create this piece. This is not the way I would normally create it, but I'm trying to show you options using welding tools um, to go ahead and to go ahead and uh, create this thing. So what you can do now is you can go and remove a chunk of this using the X or weld option. It, you have to create that chunk though. So we're going to create another square. Problem is, is I don't know what size of square that's going to be. And the closest thing that I have figured out to measuring this is to grab that measuring tool, zoom in, click on point A as close as you can get it, zoom in, click on point B as close as you can get it, it's 0.792. So we're going to go ahead and make this 0.792 wide and we're going to have to do the same thing for the height. So Click on point A as close as I can get it and this is not going to be 100% accurate but honestly with plasma you wouldn't notice the difference anyway because as your tips wear out your kerf width may change a little slightly and it's going to be smaller than the scale we're working with. So 0.698 on that one. So let's change the height on this. Again this proportional scaling is unchecked. Let's change the height to 0.698. And now what I have to do is I have to get this corner and this corner to line up. So I'm going to click on this object and then shift and left click. I'm holding down my shift key and select that object. Now if I come up to edit, no sorry, layout, arrange and distribute, alignment, I always get there with alt K. Then you can come up here and I always have aligned the last object selected on this. That's what I use 99% of the time. And I'm just going to go ahead and align to the top and left. And You can see where I'm going with this. Now I'm going to take these two objects, highlight them, and I'm going to XOR them. Now this is going to create a problem and I'll explain it here in a second. Um, well, I'll explain it now. 
Um, typically, when you go and XOR something where the lines are overlapping one on top of the other, you're going to have a stray point out here that doesn't quite get taken care of. Now, if you were to take this object and up arrow once, and up left arrow once, and, and move it slightly off of the previous piece where it's not, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm zoomed in as far as I can go, and I'm just getting as close as I can. Now, if I were to do this, everything will work out perfectly. Um, but if I don't, Alt-K, align those. If I don't do that, this is the problem that will occur. Let um, me come in here and do an XOR weld, but you're subtracting one from the other. Now, see this stray point that we have? The stray point, you can take care of it. You just highlight it in order to get to this, these uh, nodes, I double clicked on the object, I highlight this, right click, move over, I'm holding down my right button, move over to this, release on the trash can, it deletes that node and you're okay. So it's just something to be aware of. I've noticed that the program uh, behaves that way if everything's perfectly lined up and I, I tend to offset things just a hair. Okay, so now we've got the overall shape. Now we need to create this circle. This circle, as I imported it, and I don't know whether or not it was part of the import program or the picture. I think it was actually the picture was a little squished looking in here. Um, so the circle, I'm not sure of the exact size it is shooting for. Um, but it says 0.247 on the width, 0.206. I'm going to say let's make it a quarter inch hole. So grab the circle object. Now, this is dealing with radius and not the diameter. When I said it's quarter inch hole, that's a diameter. So I have to do 0 0.25, which, which is the diameter. Divide that by 2 because that's what a radius is. And that gives me a circle of 0 0.125. Or sorry, 0 0.250, a radius of 0.125. So we've created the circle, and as you can see, I think that's what he's shooting for there. So we'll go ahead and align it up. Uh, as best you can. Now, this is this is why I wouldn't do this object this way because if you want to center this on here, you can eyeball it, you can move it in an eighth of an inch, whatever. I, I'm not sure how you want to do that. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm first of all I'm going to man I'm going to move this maybe an eighth of an inch from the side. Um, it seems a little close to me, but I'll just go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where the top of this line is, where where it is on the y-axis. So if I come and highlight the corresponding nub of the object, I can see that on my axis, 7.009 is where that's at. Now if I highlight this next object that I want to move, the top nub is selected, I can make it the exact same, um, the y's point, or 7.009. You'll see that it's line up now when I do that. If I want to move it down an eighth of an inch, you can do minus 1 divided by 8, 1, one divided by 8 and that moved it down an eighth of an inch which looks pretty close to what he was doing here. Now centering it um, between two points when your overall object is wider than this current section from here to here. If I tried to center this, op this object onto this object it would end up right over here. And that's not what we want to do. So what you have to do is manually try to do it. You can either eyeball it or you can, um, you know, do a little bit of math. Um, try to figure out what the width of this thing is. Click on this point. I don't remember anymore. So 0.604. So let me just do some math real quick. 0 0.604. Point. Uh, we want to divide that into two. 302, however, um, we need to subtract 0 0.125, 3210, 9, 12, 1, 0.177. So I just calculated that we need to move it 0.177 from the right side. I could be wrong, and very likely am, but. We'll grab the, I just basically highlighted this object, selected the right nub, found the x coordinates. Now I'm going to take this object, give it the same x coordinates, and subtract it by what I calculated. Let's see if I'm right. Hey, that's actually right. So what I did is I just took this distance here, and I subtracted half of this distance here, 
and that gave me the what I needed to, to do to center it. Now, this is two two different objects. I'm not talking about this one. Um, if I do an Alt S and show this fill, you can see what I mean. We've got one object here and one object here. So we want to do the XOR weld. I'm going to do Control Z to undo that, or Edit undo right there. Now, if I highlight all of these and come up here and do the XOR weld or subtraction. Um, you don't see much, just a little blink maybe. And then if I do Alt S, which is actually going to be under Transform, where is it? View, Show Fill, that's the Alt S command. If I do Alt S, you can see that this is now one object, and I think this is what he's trying to create. So now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, show you the way that I would go about creating this. And I would actually do this with two different objects. Um, well, three different objects. Okay, so first thing I need is the width and height of this object. The width, and this is going to be rough because this tool isn't accurate. I wish it would. I honestly wish it would snap to the object, but it doesn't. 0.604. Okay, so 0.604 and the height of the overall object. I'll just copy that. 0.604. So we're going to make this 0.604 and give it the same height. Next thing we want to do is get the width of this thing. The width is 1.396. We'll give this bottom one the same width. And then let's find out the height of this particular piece. And to zoom in and out quickly like this, I'm just using the wheel on my mouse. Um, and I just scroll it up and down to zoom in and out and it zooms in and out on your mouse. So this is 1.011. So we'll make this one match 1.011. Well, I messed with the wrong one. The height 1.011. I just control Z to undo it again. Now I'm going to take these two objects, go up here to layout, arrange and distribute alignment, alt K. And I'm going to line these up on the bottom right hand corner so we'll line them up on the right hand on the bottom side and I'm gonna leave it at that for now before I weld them I'm going to try to center this object so I'm gonna take this object shift click this object I'm gonna do alt K the shortcut for alignment and I'm gonna say center it and then we'll align it on the top um, and then we'll just take this object select it doesn't matter which nub you have selected honestly it does not matter because you're going to affect it the same no matter what. So we're going to move this down one eighth of an inch. So come into the y coordinates minus 0.125. And there we are. Now we're going to take these two objects. We're going to and weld them, which is combine them, basic weld. So this and this are welded now. They're one piece. And as before, I have not done a subtraction or XOR weld for this one. So if I show the fill with an Alt S or View Show Fill. Um, you can see that has not been removed. So highlight everything um, and come down here and do the XOR weld. Now this, just so you're aware, this AND weld, what I called this one an AND weld, which is actually a basic weld, I rarely use this one, maybe 2% of the time. Most of the time, 55, 60% of the time I'm using XOR and then I'm the rest of the time I'm using basic. But we're going to do this XOR weld and now if I show the fill, you can see we have that object. That's the way I would go about creating it. It's it's a little quicker. If I didn't have to explain it, I can actually move a lot quicker. Now, the final piece of this that I want to get to is how can I go and resize this thing once it's all welded together? You can, if you go and save this project off, close your screen, uh, you know, close the program, come back and open it later. You cannot come in here and do Control Z and undo all these steps and get back to these objects to resize things. So we're going to treat it um, like that's the case, and we're going to go ahead and try to resize this. Now, if I wanted to make this overall width of this thing maybe a half an inch thicker, I will show you the way I will go about this. Now, I have done this many ways. I have tried to come in here and take this object and right-click on this object and break them apart and then come in here and delete these points, and it it's it's really painful. The 
thing that I've discovered is that the easiest way to accomplish this is to go and break apart what you want to resize. So I'm going to come in here and it doesn't matter the size of this that I'm going to create. I'm just going to create a little box. I'm going to highlight these objects. I'm going to XOR weld these, subtraction weld, and then I'll come and delete this point and this point. So I now have two objects. If I wanted to make this a half an inch wider on the bottom, well, I just move this a half an inch on the bottom. So let's take the X position, minus 0.5. There's a half an inch. Now, instead of trying to combine it through different methods, the easiest way I've discovered is come in here and create another box. Create a box to just to rip it apart. Create a box to join it. I'm going to and or weld these. And notice I didn't try to line all the boxes up in anything. I just put a piece in there. I'm going to and or weld these. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to highlight all of these points. Right click, hold down the right click, come over to the trash can, delete. I just extended it a half an inch. Okay, I'm going to undo that with a couple of Control Z's. Now, what if you want to go the other way? Well, we don't want to mess with the hole, so let's just make sure that if we go, you know, if you wanted to extend this piece from here to here, you're going to come and create a box and you're going to chop it up. XOR weld these. Uh, these, these buttons always confuse me. XOR weld these. Um, come in here and delete these pieces just so you can kind of get an idea of what your objects look like. And you can move this up on the y-axis. You want to move it up a quarter of an inch. Uh, if I hit the right buttons. Then I move the whole thing up a quarter of an inch. Notice that the whole, if I show the fill, the whole is still part of this object. It's still one object. And I'm just going to come in here again. Yeah. Actually, let's just uh, just to show you doesn't really matter what I do. I'm going to just put it over here and I'm, I can make it thick. I don't care. Now I'm going to just do a basic weld on these right here. Basic weld. Double click on the object again. Come and delete all of these points in the middle. And you've just extended the object. Now that's the easiest way that I've found to go ahead and do this. There are other ways to do it. Um, I just haven't found... I just I don't like some of the other ways that I've, that I've ever tried to do that. So that's, that's how I'd go about resizing something. If you want to resize just this piece up here, it's the exact same process. Come in here, chop it somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. XOR weld these, and I'm, doing, I'm using my shortcut keys now. So don't worry about why I'm doing this uh, this fast. So let's just see why. Let's move it up. Apparently when I type the first time around, something's not working for me. And I accidentally drew that a little too small, so that's okay. It's just a matter of getting used to the program as, as with any other program. You, so you can go ahead and resize things like that if you want to. Um, if this didn't cover what you're shooting for, Gamble, let me know and, and I'll try to clarify. Um, otherwise, I hope this helps, and I hope it helps others. And if you guys like the pace of this video with me showing where the actual commands are instead of just the shortcuts, um, I can see if I can try to implement that in future videos. Thank you.